Hey, welcome back to the How to Podcast series. It's Dave, episode 227. Hope you're doing good. Hope you're doing well. I'd love to know, what episode number are you on with your podcast? Howtopodcast.ca. You can leave me a voice message on my speak pipe. Let me know. Dave, I'm on episode 2. Dave, I'm on episode 3,435. What is it? What is your number? I'd love to hear where are you at with your podcast. Let's celebrate together. And again, if you're if you're just ready to press publish on your first episode, you have your trailer out, wherever you're at with your podcast, let's celebrate you. You're doing hard stuff. You're doing great stuff in podcasting, and we need to celebrate each other. Cheer each other on. So leave me a message. How to podcast.ca. Little speak pipe icon. Just click it. You got a record button right there and leave me a message. Tell me the name of your show, your name. I'd love to know your name. And what's your episode number? What's coming out this week, next week, this month? Where are you at? Let's let's celebrate the number. How many episodes did you got? Come on, out of podcast.ca. Let's celebrate together. We're talking today on mastering concise content creation. How's that for three seasons in a row? Yeah. Concise content creation, podcasting tips for engaging audiences. And my big overall thought today in the podcast is let's just get to the point, people. Just get to the point here on the How to Podcast series. You ready? Here we go. So I've shared this clip in other places, and I wanted to share it with you if you haven't heard it already. And it's hilarious. It is one person who's recorded his voice twice. So he's talking with himself and he's showing and uncovering for you the silliness that is happening in podcasting today, where you press play on a podcast episode and you're listening to people talk circles. Have you ever, have you ever watched a politician that has been asked a question they don't want to answer? Do you notice that they... A, don't even acknowledge the question and start talking about something completely el- different altogether. Or they talk in such vague circles, they just run the clock out. Think of basketball. Take your shot, right? And they just, the clock is ticking down and they're just, they're just saying th- stuff, you know, because, hey, we're just going to talk this out to the point where you forgot what the question was. And I'm hearing it in podcasting where podcast hosts will get on and either on their own or with a guest they start going down these weird paths that lead to nowhere. And as a listener, it's so frustrating because you're like, what was the point of that? Can I have that five minutes back in my life? Because I don't even know what that was. I have no clue. And it's like, Dave, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, well, you made me do it. Here's an example. And again, this gentleman who did this is just doing to poke fun at people, Right. So if you hear your voice and what just happens next here as we press play on this, then we need to talk because your audience, they really want to tell you that you need to stop doing this in your next episode. You ready? Okay. Again, remember, he's kind of poking fun at us here a little bit, but there's a little bit of truth hiding in here. But here you go. So that, that's mm. what I think. Yeah, that's so true. You know, I'm really glad you brought that up. I think this is really important. And if I can just mm-hmm. speak about this for a minute, because yeah. I've I've really been thinking about this quite a lot. And mm-hmm. um, here's the thing, right? Here's when it all comes down to it mm-hmm. and we like really begin to understand, like, this is what I think. And, but th- this is why we have you on. It's my opinion. Yeah. It's, yeah. but I really, so my friend works at the New York Times, right? Oh, nice. Yeah. And, um, so this is what I think. There's a lot of conversation and there's a lot of dialogue around the subject without really dissecting and understanding the subject. And I think what we really need, and I've said this before, I've said this on my podcast, if people want to no, check that out, check yeah. that out as well, but we'll put the link in. There. I think what's really important is that we generate more conversation around, I mean, what we're doing right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. This kind of like, it's so important. No, for sure. It's so important. It's so important. It really is. Like we it need really this. is. Yeah. So that mm. that's what I think. Yeah, that's so true. You know, I'm really glad you brought that up. I think this is really important. And if I can just mm-hmm. speak about this for a minute, yeah. Because I've I've really been thinking about this quite a lot. And mm-hmm. um, so okay, how does that feel? Listening to that, as you hear, as you hear again, that's one person with two two different voices, 
And he kind of blended, so he's talking over each other. I love the, you know, we'll put it in the show notes and the podcast. Notes. Yeah. yeah, all that's in there. It just, the, what did they say? What, what, did, what, what was the point of that? Like, really, nothing happened there. And I'm like, why did I just listen to that? I, I don't even, I don't even know where it started and ended. It just was this continuous loop of, what? What? Yeah. Okay. So, in our podcast, that is an example you just heard of what it's not to be concise in your content creation. That is not concise. That is meandering. That is tangents. That is a lot of words that say nothing. That is very, very frustrating for a listener. And what that tells me, if that was a true podcast, is that podcaster and that guest have no sweet clue what they're talking about. They have no point to this podcast. They have no reason to be on the mic. And they're wasting your time as a listener. So how do we stop doing that? I think it comes back to how we get ready and how we produce our podcast and how we show up in this world. In the world of podcasting, brevity is key. I actually read a saying that says, if I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. Okay, well, that makes sense. More time, I would have written a shorter letter. That, what? Okay. The importance of concise content creation is all around us in podcasting, and it's something that we need to ascribe ourselves to, something that we need to do well. Because I listen to people who podcast for an hour because their show is an hour, not because they have an hour's worth of content. Now that is frustrating because 15 minutes in, they're done talking and now they chase whatever shiny object comes across their screen, hoping that someone will ask a question in a live stream or pop in a comment from the, what they found on Google searches or a Facebook group. They just chase these things with no point to what they're doing. And that is so frustrating as a listener because I don't know where we're going. I have no idea. Be like getting on a bus and there's no idea where it's headed to. You're like, I think we're going this way. Oh, no, now we're going left. No, wait. Now we're going down. We're going right now. I have no idea where this is going. You don't want that feeling for your listener in your podcast. You want them to have a clear sense of, this is kind of the big idea, beginning, middle, and end. There's got to be something, some sort of structure. By mastering the art of being concise in our communication, it can transform both you as a creator because you'll get better and your listeners will appreciate it as well. It's not just about being brief. It's about being focused, accurate, and mindful of your audience. Whether you're crafting an episode, a promotional snippet to talk about your podcast, or a message on stage in front of thousands, being concise in your content can make all the difference and help you to engage with your audience better. So here are some strategies to help you in your podcast craft a concise content that resonates with your listeners. Are you ready? Okay, number one, get to the point. The aim of your podcast episode, the next one you record, has, to, has got to be to capture your listeners' attention with a few carefully chosen words, short, impactful statements, that stick with your audience and leave a lasting impression. What's the last time you recorded? What kind of intention did you have for that first beginning of your show? Did you have intention or you just turn on the mic and start talking? Make sure that you are, you are using carefully chosen words that bring your audience into the episode. Don't waste the beginning of your podcast. Really. And if you're an interview-based podcast... Don't read off your guest's LinkedIn bio. Just put the link in the show notes and get to the topic. Some of my guests, I don't even introduce them by their full name. It's just like, hey, Dave's on the show. Hey, Dave, welcome to the show. Tell me about your podcast. We are in. Boom. Done. The listener puts their phone in their pocket. They're like, I'm ready. <laughs> that, I didn't even have a chance to hit the skip button. We're right in. That's a great way to get your listeners to put their phone away. That should be your goal in every episode. How fast can I put my listener's phone in their pocket? Hmm. 
Am I going on and on and on? Do I have 10 commercials at the beginning of my show? Do I talk about my cat before I go to my golf podcast? No. Come on. Jump into the content. Let your audience know that you value their time. And they press play for a reason. So honor that press as they press play. Get to the point. Number two is clear communication. So by distilling your ideas into the clearest form, you reduce the risk of misunderstandings and you keep your audience engaged from, the, from start to finish. Now you think of distilleries, right? They, you see the copper wire. In some places, they're making like moonshine or whatever. But even, let's say, distilled water, so we keep it for everybody, there's a copper line and, you know, the water's heated up and that condensation runs through the copper wire. And I'm, I'm explaining all this to you like I know what I'm talking about. But that's distilled, that's distilled water. And it is, when I talk to doctors, the purest form of water because everything else, all that crap is taken out of the water that is in our regular tap water. And distilled water is a great way to get the purest form of water. It's distilled. It's the best of the best that comes from the water. So what is the best of the best for your podcast? Are you giving them everything? Like all of your unfiltered thoughts? Like just everything in a big mashup of words and thoughts and ideas and misdirections and uh, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Or are you distilling it down to the main things? Here are the main topics today, right? We're talking about four things. That's it. I have four. I know that I'm already on number two. So I got two more after this. We're done. We're done. There's a plan. It's in the show notes. You can follow along. All the information is there for you, right? So clear communication. Distill your big ideas down to something small. And if you want to avoid sounding like a robot and reading to your audience like an audiobook, this is not an audiobook. This is a podcast. Then write everything out. Get all your main things out. All of your sub points and your, your, all your links and all of the things and the big idea and break it all down by your points and then read it to yourself a couple times and then shorten it down just to your main points and then put the paper off to the side and tell me what you, what you wrote. Like we're sitting at a cafe and I just bought you your second cup of coffee. Tell me what you wrote without looking at the paper. Can you do it? Hmm. Do you know your four main points, your two main points, your big idea? Can you tell me that without reading to me? I don't want you to read to me. I can just read that later. But tell me what you think about what you wrote. Tell me what you think about your big idea. That means more to me as a listener than for you to read to me. Just, I, okay, here's an example. I had one podcaster I was talking to, and they were so proud of their show notes, which they turned into a blog on their website, which you can do, that they proudly stated. Now, I don't even know how... They got to this conclusion, but they said, my show notes, my blog posts for my podcast episodes are so good, Dave, like so good that people don't even have to listen to my podcast anymore. And some of the people don't even listen to my show. They just come read my blog. And I said to them, congratulations. Well done. You have a blog. Good job. <laughs> uh, we're podcasters. We use our voice. And it's great to have great show notes and blog entries and all this stuff that goes along with a podcast. But at the end of the day, you can't listen to a blog on the way to work. It doesn't work. You kind of need to focus on the road. Reading a blog while walking your dog, you might walk into a stop sign. So listening to a podcast is my main means of communication. And that's why we're here on the How to Podcast series. This is not the How to Blog series. This is the How to Podcast series. So the fact that you get all your words on paper and people don't even have to listen to your show anymore because you're so good at writing, then be a writer. Yeah, you're really good at it. You can stop podcasting now. Just be a blogger. Distill your ideas down. Make clear content for your audience. That's our job. Number three, we need to respect our audience's time. We say in podcasting that we're, we have no competition, right? 
We could have a hundred people talk about how podcasting and how to podcast. And we all get along great. We all hold each other's hands. Kumbaya. And we are best friends. Right? True. There's a lot of great collaboration in podcasting. A lot of amazing friends and people that I've been able to meet with who do what I do. And we get along great. But there is this form of competition. And I don't know if you know about this or have realized people only have 24 hours in a day. People work. People have lives. People eat. They sleep. There's a lot of things that we do during the day. And when you boil it all down, if you distill it, back to number two, if you distill it all down, there's only so many minutes, hours per day that you can listen to a podcast. So in a crowded world of many podcasts, you're still competing with the listener's time. They're going to have to say no to something, to say yes to you. They'll have to say no to, as my wife has been watching every episode of any TV show that has Chicago in it, Chicago firefighters, garbage collectors, Chicago animal rescue, Chicago doctors, Chicago PD. She loves Chicago, apparently. You have to say no to something to create time in your day to listen to a podcast. And if you come to a podcast and you look at all of the shows that you follow and they all release an episode on the same day, how many episodes of each podcast can you listen to? So you are competing with one thing, and that is time. So you want to make sure that your podcast is as concise as possible. You need to respect the time that your audience has to listen to your podcast. Just recognize that your listeners are limited in their time and their attention. If you're boring, people will fade off and they'll be uh, listen to about 10 minutes of your show and they, they, haven't, they don't remember a single thing you just said because you lost them. Because maybe you read to your audience in a very monotone, straight voice with no inflection and it seems like you are just reading from the paper. Okay, after a while of that, an hour of that, you are going to be thinking about something else. I think so. Respect your audience time. Deliver concise content. Show respect for their busy lives. And increase the likelihood they'll tune in more regularly because you're going to do your best in the time it takes to get your message across. If your podcast content is around 30 minutes worth of content, don't make a one-hour show. Don't waste your time. Make a 30-minute show. If it's 28 minutes, don't make a 30-minute show. Don't just stretch it out for two minutes to hit a random target of 30-minute episodes. Don't. Make the episode the length it needs to be and nothing more. That's it. That's all it takes. Respect your audience's time. The last part of all of this is practice makes perfect. Crafting concise content might take you more time and effort initially, but with practice, you'll become more adept at conveying your message succinctly without sacrificing depth or quality. How often do you practice? Again, how do you get good at baseball? You swing a bat. How do you get good at golfing? You go to the driving range. You don't go right to the golf course and step up to the tee and expect to be Tiger Woods. No. You practice. You invest time. How do you get good at playing the piano or the guitar or the drums, the trumpet, the tuba? How do you get good at these things? You don't just one day decide to pick it up and be perfect at it and then ask people to pay you for it. No, you practice. You learn the craft. You study, right? That's how you become perfect, through practice. How much practice have you done this week around your podcast? Well, Dave, I just record my episodes and post them. Okay, but how are you getting better? Have you practiced new intros and outros? Have you practiced your interviews? Practice makes perfect. All of us need to practice more. It'll benefit your listener. It'll help your, your audience connect with you better. So when we're talking podcasting, remember being concise is not about sacrificing the substance of your podcast. It's about delivering your message in the most impactful way possible. Embrace your podcast as a journey. Come on. You'll captivate your audience and leave them eager for more. 
And I hope that's what's happening here on the How to Podcast series. I hope you listen to this and go, this Dave guy, he doesn't have all the answers, but I kind of like him. I kind of like what he's talking about, and I like how he shows up in this world. That's the goal for this. That's what I'm hoping for. And that you don't just learn from my opinion, but you learn from the amazing guest co-hosts that come on this show. Because to hear my thoughts over and over and over, episode after episode, eh, I appreciate it, but I only know what I know, and I don't know what I don't know, just like you. So bringing on these amazing co-hosts gives us a chance to hear podcasting in a new light from a different perspective, different stories, different people, and I hope you're enjoying it. If you are a podcaster, even if you're just a baby podcaster or thinking about starting a show, I'd love to have you come on as a guest co-host. You don't have to have a minimum number of episodes. You don't have to be doing this for a period of time. You don't have to hit a number of download numbers to be on the show. You can just be curious. You can just be a newbie and you can be learning. And I'd love to have you come on as a guest co-host. Go again to my calendar on my podcast website, howtopodcast.ca. Get some time with me in the calendar. Let's get you on the show and, and talk about your show, answer your questions, have a great conversation, and help a listener at the same time. Thanks for being here. Get out there and master concise content creation and engage your audience. Thank you for being here. Take care. Hey, thank you for sticking all the way through to the very end. It's bittersweet that the episode is over and that we're done for this episode, but you will come back and I will come back and, you know, there's you and me and we're one big happy family here at the How to Podcast series, far beyond being just pod pals, which is fine, but I'd much rather do, do life together as family here. And to that end, a reminder as we talked earlier in other episodes as well that we do have a meetup group and you are invited I would love to have you come it's free, we do them scattered throughout our calendar, different days different times because we have people listening around the world like Cuba and Warsaw, Poland, hi Cuba it's amazing how we can reach the world with a podcast so through our meetup group, what we do is we get together, it's free for you cost me money, but that's okay I'm okay with that we get together, we meet other podcasters, we talk podcasting, and it's a way to get from behind the microphone, sitting by ourselves, recording on our own, and doing community. Podcasters need community. You need to meet other podcasters. And just in a low-key, fun environment, talk podcasting. So my challenge to you in 2024 and beyond is to get into a meetup group, find other podcasters, Introduce yourself and make new friends. It's just like school all over again, grade nine. Let's meet each other and share the podcast journey. Go to howtopodcast.ca and click on all the information you'll find there around our meetups. And I'd love to have you there. Thanks for listening. Catch you on the next episode. Get out there and record your podcast. Take care.